that's been kicked in the nuts by fake news. Nobody knows what to believe. Uh, I don't know what I said. Uh -huh. We need one Maverick newsman to cut through all the noise and tell us what's really real. I'm not that guy. Hello! Welcome to Really Real with Richie Redding. I'm Richie Redding, uh, the the only host of the single most successful podcast of all time. <laughs> the greatest project ever to take place. Just storming YouTube by the <laughs> by the halls and by the balls. We're taking YouTube. Take that, Mr. Beast, all up in your ass. Uh, yeah, man. Welcome back to Really Real with Richie Redding. And uh, what's up, Bobby? Good to see you, buddy. Nice to see you as well. How was we your got, weekend? Uh, it was good. And also, what's up to the Twiz man, my, my only audience holding it down for <laughs> us in Nigeria. Uh, I feel like people don't think that that's real, but it is very much real that we have our, our friend <laughs> tuning in from Nigeria as our live studio audience. <laughs> and it couldn't be any weirder at any more me. So here's to that. Uh, my weekend was good. It was it was a lot of uh, last the last few nights have been late as shit. Uh, a lot of sets at the cellar. Had a reminder that uh, that Dave Attell is still the most underrated comics comic of all time. If you guys ever get a chance to see him, you, ab you absolutely have to jump on it. I was supposed to be on stage at 105. I got off stage at 215 for a show that was supposed to start at midnight. Uh, it probably started at like 1220. It was just like everybody went long. And Attell went up and did half an hour after a two hour, you know, 10 minute long show already and just <laughs> threw everybody set in the trash. The dude is the actual best. It, it's it's amazing that he's not a household name, but um, <laughs> which which gives me great pause for knowing that I really really am never going to make it unless you guys hit that fucking share button. What a kill. Okay, um, but I had uh, I had that thing that I told you about in in the Poconos at the at the Pocono Palace, which. Uh, <laughs> Is it's a throwback like old school. It's a resort, but it's clearly just like a white trash sex motel. And there, there's some black folks there too, but we all know it's a white trash sex motel. Uh, the highlight of the, the whole thing in the Poconos. The high, but there are a surprising amount of black people in the Poconos and Puerto Ricans. But uh, <laughs> the the highlight, if you if you're really balling out at the Pocono Palace, you get the champagne shaped hot tub and that that is platinum level white trash couple status if you get to come in a champagne tub you made it dude it doesn't matter if the trailer gets repossessed you nutted in a champagne tub son and my uh my room was one of the lower tiered rooms, which is below that, but it's, it, they, they still, it's a heart-shaped bed, and then next to that, a heart-shaped uh, uh, tub. It's, it's like a hot tub also, and I can tell you from personal experience, nothing makes you feel like more of a loser than uh, roughing up the suspects in a, in a heart-shaped tub. It really... <laughs> really just feels like you got left at the altar and you're just running up the couple credit card in a in a heart-shaped tub but dude and also uh, what's that half of the heart to jerk off on oh i was right in the which middle baby yours nah it's centrical vesicle or whatever it's called <laughs> <laughs> i hit that aorta baby but uh well, and also, it's like, it's one of those creepy ass rooms that's just surrounded on all sides by mirrors. And like, and there's a mirror above the bed and shit. So, like, it's a narcissist dream. But if you have any kind of body issues, whoo, if you've got a trouble spot, you are going to see that motherfucker no matter what way you point. There is no hiding. You got a bald spot, I can tell you. There's no hiding from that son of a bitch. You just <laughs> try, <laughs> I was trying to juke it and shit. Like, nope. Here's what you're worried about. But yeah, the 
it is a, a very strange uh, tub first <laughs> sex culture there. <laughs> and uh, I can also tell you that, uh, and this is an overshare coming everybody's way. First time I ever came, I think I was 12 years old, was in a tub. And, uh, and my cousin was there. But no, don't shake your head at me like that, Bobby. It was a guy. <laughs> Okay, geez. Uh, <laughs> this is your month, Richie. Yeah, you know what? For Pride Month, yeah. It, have they added incest to the end of the, <laughs> to, to all the letters? LGBTQ+, 2SA, incest. Like, whoa! whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if incest tried to tag itself on. <laughs> at the end. Like it. it could be but, the maps. Yeah, we already got the maps, but yeah, there there has to be some kind of an acronym for uh, sister attracted person, <laughs> SAP, <laughs> sibling attracted persons. <laughs> well, there's a couple of SAPs, you know. <laughs> Love a good story, just sappy as shit. But no, it was uh, it was like a big ass hot tub. And I don't know who did it first, but somebody threw their leg over that bitch and was like, hey, that feels good. And then moments later, there's just two 12-year-olds with a leg over the side. I don't like this look you're giving me, Twiz. It was, it was in innocent tub fucking. Uh, but yeah, boy, if you put a 12-year-old dick in it, ah, that's not a good way to start any sentence now that I think about it. But <laughs> just really setting myself up to get clipped out there, huh? But no, if, if you put a, yeah, okay, I'll finish the sentence. You put a 12-year-old dick in direct contact with a jet stream coming out of jacuzzi, you got a good 30 seconds tops before something's going to happen. Uh, all I knew was that it felt really good. And it like, it was... It, it, it like you know it was like both did that and then stopped and it was like whoa what was that and uh and didn't even know that anything came out because it was the hot tub <laughs> it's uh all i knew was that i put on flannel pajamas that night like i took a shower or whatever and put on flannel and the flannel was just catching it just it was catching on everything <laughs> it was like, I don't like the face. This is a perfectly good fucking a tub story. And, uh, but yeah, there, there, was, uh, there was a bunch of fuzzies on, on my, uh, all over that were catching the flannel that it was, uh, turned out it was cousin cum. It was just a ton of cousin cum all over. Bobby, you know what? I'm not going to tell you heart touching stories anymore if you keep treating me with this scorn. You promise? Please don't. You're putting the mmm and muller right now, Richie. Dude, it's Saps month. All right, this is my month. I'm cousin attracted. Yo, and I, I promise you this much. I, I mean, I've only seen him. Like, he's, he's somebody that I don't see often at all. We have never spoken of it. I mean... Yeah. This might be the first time that he uh, that, that he knows that I still remember it. I think he was older too. He might have been fourteen. So he's he's the rapist. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, dude, so on Sunday I went down to uh, to Philly for my buddy Toure's, who's an absolute OG of. Uh, of, of Philly comedy. It was his 30 year anniversary of doing comedy. Uh, he was the first guy that ever took me on the road and shit. But uh, the, a, uh, <laughs> I, I was reminded of this. The, the first road show that we ever went on together, it was an eight o'clock show in Trenton, which is like an hour 15 probably from, from Philly. And him and Spank, who's Kevin Hart's like main opener, him and Naimar, uh, they pick me up at like 8.15. And, and like 10 minutes later, get a call from the promoter saying like, yo, where are you guys at? 
He's like, uh, yeah, we're coming across the bridge right now. We'll be there in five. And I'm in the back like, what the fuck is happening? Like, we're so late. Oh, my God. They're going to dock our pay. <laughs> we got there, and that show started like an hour later. He's like, yeah, I knew it was going to be some bullshit, man. <laughs> so, he, uh, he taught me lots about comedy. Definitely taught me a lot about uh, how to do black comedy. But uh, it was it was it was the first time maybe ever that right before the show, I had a uh, because of Father's Day stuff. I had a uh, had like a, a big lunch, Mediterranean salad with poached salmon, and two or three hours later, I'm I'm down there at his show and. Uh, darned if I didn't think I was about to have a diarrhea blast as I was going on stage. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a definite, like, do not fart situation. <laughs> that it was like, yo, dude, this might be the one. And uh, I don't know. It's something that I, I don't know how it works, but the stage can take away a whole bunch of stuff. Like, it's taken away massive sore throats like sinus infections shit like that like when you have to go on right before it and this time the magic of the stage and the fear of diarrheaing myself in front of 300 black people it uh it did the trick it did <laughs> so and i don't know what happened to it i don't i still still haven't had that diarrhea it's in there somewhere but <laughs> It's the ghost poo, but uh, so afterwards, right? There's there's a ton of comics in the back, and uh, and two still does this like comedy class for he calls it comedy college. So it's like for 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 comics that have started but like you know haven't really progressed. So he's always got a few of these guys hanging around, and. Uh, and there's this dude, and, and two was like, yeah, man, you remember him? His name was, you know, like, basically or something. Like, that was a thing in, uh, like, 20 years ago in, in black comedy that everybody had a name, like, you know, it was like, there, there was one fella named Ketchup Wilson, but it was like, Home Alone, Deep Thoughts, like, just, just all these dumbass names. Uh, Little Kev, the bastard. <laughs> well, Lil Kev did okay for himself, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but that type of thing, it was like basically or some shit, and, uh, and this dude's like, like, yo, man, we did a show together back in like, back in, you know, he, he, I don't even know what it was, but he, he said the venue and it was like, it was, it was like 52nd in Park, which in Philly was one of the more fucked up neighborhoods that I had ever been to to do shows. And he's like, he's like, yeah, man, you came up to me after the show and we were like, hey, man, just so you know, like, that's, that, that's a joke that I've heard somebody do before, so you might want to, you know, if I could stick to the stuff that, that you know is yours. Uh, and so he, t he tells me that like that. He's like, yeah, you know, he came up to me and said that. He's like, yo, I had gotten out like 10 days ago and I was about to put you in a fucking trunk. I was like, what? <laughs> he's, he's like, yo, I had the phone out. I was like, ooh, so I put this motherfucker in a trunk. I was like, what are we going to do? He's like, torture you. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> How dare you give me constructive criticism? I wish the fuck you would try to help me better my profession. <laughs> but, yo, know, he was dead serious when he said that. He's like, you were almost in the trunk, bro. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, why didn't you? Uh, he's like, because I started to ask around. Was like, yo, who the fuck is this dude? Why is he here by himself? And he said, like, the promoter was just like, yo, this white boy was crazy. <laughs> And like somehow that get, that got me out of it, but it also, yeah, I mean it's it's been a mystery of of mine of like how I was in, so and and it's not like you know who cares you're the only only white guy there in Manhattan. It's like it's 
still fucking Manhattan. It's a perfectly safe. That it's not the people. It's the place, right? That it's like th that's what makes something dangerous. Like once you're out, completely out of your 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 comfort zone, and uh, like Godfrey had made fun of me before because I told a story where it was like, yeah, I'm the only white guy there. And he's like, oh, I was the only, they were up. And like, no, 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 I mean, for miles, motherfucker. <laughs> and that room was, mode. yeah, that room was the first place where I ever uh, had girls walk me back to my car. <laughs> that, yo, I misled this shit out of a couple fat girls in my day. Because be talking to him, and be like, yeah, we got to hang out sometime. I'm like, yeah, how about you walk with me back to my car? And it's it's half bodyguard, but it was more just like, if there's a drive-by, there's a way better chance that they're going to hit you. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just sheer frame. You're probably stopping a bullet. That's what the hood will do to you. It'll make you really look at a girl different. Like, can she stop a mag? <laughs> <laughs> can, sure, she's cute, but can she stop a slug? Uh, so, okay. So the the since I'm old Philly stuff, I got to tell you this story of uh, that what what I don't I never told you about uh, the pimp comic, did I? I don't think so. Okay, there was this guy, and so, you know, and I know I've mentioned it before, if not here, then on tons of other podcasts, that the, the open mic that I started out in was, uh, it, was it was amazing in that every Wednesday there was a sold out crowd. Like it was, it was standing room in there of like 200 people for an open mic, which is, unheard of like it was I, i've literally never seen it anywhere else in the country uh but it was also an absolute bastion of mental illness of the people that would go there i mean get there at 5 p.m 4 p.m for an eight o'clock show to be the first one in line and then do exactly the same three minutes of material that they've been doing since like 1980 uh, and one of them, one of the worst was this guy, Jimmy Wayne. And Jimmy Wayne had, like, his whole thing was that he was, his act was that he was a pimp. And dude's got the fucking, he's got the cane and the stroll, right? And it was like some goofy ass snake on the cane or whatever with a steel tip to it. And, uh,. And his act was so shitty. It was the, the, the only, I, I remember the first thing he would say was like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a pimp. Uh, and I, like, but then there was like no jokes <laughs> attached to it. And the only joke that he had was, it was some song that it was, that I, that I only know that the, the last part of it was, it looked like a monkey, but it ain't no monkey. It's a crackhead out in the alleyway. Ha ha. Right? And that was, that was his <laughs> big closer. So, because I'm completely green and thirsty for any kind of comedy, I, uh, that guy, asked me for for my number he's like i got some shows for you. you you know give me give me your number he calls me the next day and i'm like i'm literally a day into comedy like it's it's like the first time i got on was last night and he's like he's like hey man you know you got a real good look you got a real good look and you know i want a modeling agency and i think i think you could be a model man you could really be a model i just need to get some pictures of you you know and if, and, but i am wary enough to be like like i mean dude i'm not getting like pictures taken of me he's like no 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 no. i just need like some some good pictures of you you know and i'll put them on the site and then i'll get you some modeling work um, and a i know what i look like right like i know there's not much of a market for at this point i want to say i'm 5'8 135 but also like bloated with booze 
<laughs> skinny, like super skinny fat Kermit the Frog body. That's that's not moving in the model world, right? So I I kind of like, I, I get out of it somehow. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm not really, that's, that's not what I'm trying to do. And, uh, he's like, all right, man, but you, you should really reconsider. And then a few years later, I've, I'm on a road trip with another comic and his girl is driving and he's like, yeah, man, I just did some shows with, uh, with Jimmy Wayne out in, uh, out in California and we had some in, in St. Louis a few weeks ago. I don't like, how did that show run? Like, cause I, all I'm thinking is like, there's not a chance this guy's like a road comic. He's like, yeah, Jimmy, you know, Jimmy featured and I did, and then I did an hour. Oh, and I kind of like let it drop. And, uh, weeks after that, me and this dude get drunk. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I sold some dick, boy. I was like, what? <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, man, on the road, Jimmy Wayne. I was fucking selling dick. I was like, to a girl? He's like, yeah, man, you didn't know? Jimmy Wayne's a pimp. I was like, <laughs> wait, like, not just like a... Not just a, a pimp on stage, it's like, he's a pimp. He has his modeling <laughs> agency, and, you know, the way it would work out would be that, like, these, these women would pick me out, and then I got to go, I'm wearing a suit, I go to this restaurant, she meets me there, it's like a full, like, boyfriend experience, and then I spend the whole week, you know, I spend either day or the whole weekend with her. I was like, wait a second, you know, Months ago, Jimmy Wayne <laughs> asked me for pictures because he wanted to get me on his modeling site. He's like, nah, he wanted to help you sell some dick. Like, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. I'm like, what did these chicks look like? He's like, big. <laughs> it's always big. But, yo, I can't tell you how many times it crossed my mind of just like, God damn, I wish I did that just for this story. Um, dude, just, to, just for, I mean, first of all, I think I was the only white person that he knew, right? That was like how a lot of my, that was how so many of my, my, uh, my comedy gigs started. It was just like, we need a white guy. Like, well, you're the only one I've ever seen, so you get this job. But, dude, just to see the sheer look of, to experience the dread in myself while simultaneously seeing the utter disappointment of some <laughs> big fat chick when she sits down to dinner and it's me and we just both look at each other like, ah, oh, this is going to suck. But she's out <laughs> like two grand. <laughs> But yeah, apparently this was a thing and uh, more than one Philly comic back in the day sold some dick with old Jimmy Wayne, so. It looked like a monkey, but it ain't no monkey. The crackhead out of the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like uh, the majority of sex trafficking in the United States has happened within the Philly comedy scene between the foot pick guy and Jimmy the Pimp. You had to dodge a lot of bullets. The foot pick guy? Wasn't there some guy who asked for like pics of comedians' feet? No, that something? was that was Toronto. Yeah. Oh, there there was other sex trafficking attempts that we will get to in later episodes. Please remind me. But uh, <laughs> I would know that event wasn't us, but we got others. Don't worry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I want to make sure that I could get to some of these uh, these topics I wanted to hit. Lest I uh, I not get to the fail son portion of the fail son episode, but uh, dude, have you been following the uh, the 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 hundred millionaire Titanic submarine story? Yeah, it's I hard mean, to feel bad for the guy. It's really hard to feel bad for a hundred millionaire that can only have fun by either launching himself into space or going a thousand leagues under the sea. I mean, ever since Epstein's been gone, these guys really just have to find new ways to scratch that itch, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, dude, it's, 
250 grand to to go uh, underwater in something that's absolutely going to fail if it's if it's underwater for more than 96 hours is definition of retarded are you frozen bobby or are you just looking like that uh <laughs> I'm just in the picture for you yeah but uh Oh uh, yeah, that dude. The uh do, 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 do. Oh yeah, he's he's based in the United Arab Emirates. So, you know he's a good guy, right? Whenever whenever there's whenever there's an Englishman that just for whatever reason can't live in England anymore, he's got to get it done in Dubai. That's a guy that's certainly to be trusted. But yeah, I mean, his uh, th this line is has to be the best. I believe you make your own luck in life. Like, well, you certainly did this no. time. I don't know. I, there, there's a if if anybody has any misgivings about you know missing out on uh, on, on on the undersea life, there's a documentary called Last Breath that holy shit you can suck all the dicks if you want me to get in any kind of submersible it was a dude that uh that, it's in the north atlantic and he, he worked on an oil rig but you have to you have to be there's a bell under it so that you can like it, it's basically like halfway between the sea floor of, of the northern atlantic and the ship and it, it, it was like a perfect storm of shit that happened, but this guy basically was it got detached from his oxygen, and there's there's only two people that you can, that can help you because you have to live under the, in order to be at pressure you have to be under the sea for like three weeks at a time. It's fucked. It's it's an absolute heart attack of a documentary that I suggest watching, but. I think my, th this made me realize that my general rule in life is to not do any activity where if it goes wrong, my family doesn't get my body back, <laughs> right? That's, that's a very, like, I'm not going to space, fuck space tourism, <laughs> fuck Titanic tourism. If I die, my mom still gets to sit me out. <laughs> That's that's all it is. Mom still gets to give me a little <laughs> shitty kiss on my creped skin forehead, swollen with death. But uh, yeah, I, that that made me think that the. Uh, are you aware of the uh, the the rental coffin market, young Robert? No, I'm not. Supposedly, oh, so like you know how there's like 10 different levels of coffin that you can get nobody actually really buys the uh like the the highfalutin coffin but you can rent it for the services and then and so like you can basically rent the rolls royce and then get buried in the hoopty oh. uh, so yeah so so like all the time, it's it's, it's like it, it started with uh, with like drug dealer funeral type things. It's it's like the definition of fake until you make it, but all the way to the end, like dude, you you did not make it. Like <laughs> you're, you're sure it's over. DQ, bro, did not make it. But uh, yeah, it started with them that they started off doing it in hood places, and it was so successful that it was like, hey. You know, we could do this everywhere. So, I mean, I th I, I talked to somebody that that I, I knew a guy that, that was uh, an embalmer, but they and and they make stupid money. By the way, that is a great racket to get into. It's it's something like a tw I think that guy said he made twenty five hundred a body, and he could do like four a week. Doing the wow. math. That's half a milli, wow. working four days a week. If you, the only problem is if you're still dating, you have to look a girl in the eye and tell her that you are an undertaker. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but yeah, he said that it started out like with the Hoodwoods, and now most of them have it. 
so that you can you can rent a super fancy one and then they just wait until everybody goes away like they'll even they even lower it into the ground you know so that th you get the satisfaction of that closure uh, the second that they're out of luck just squeeze 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 just pull that bitch back up that's got to be gruesome now is it going to get to the point where it's like put me in the casket they used for biggie like is it who else rented the casket is going to play a factor in how mm. expensive it's going to be now nah, biggie's is definitely underground hmm yeah bad example it is yeah, that that is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it can be the one, it can be like yo, give me the one my uncle was in. My, right? <laughs> you have a family coffin that you just keep. Maybe that's the cheapest way to do it. Just get a get a coffin that you sit everybody in and then dump them out at the end. You just love but, family based activities, Richie. I really do. I'm a family guy first. Uh. <laughs> but it also seems like if you're going to because I'm a big, I like the idea of cremation, and I feel like they should like have options to to do cool poses. Like, why is it always the Dracula shit? Oh, you, you know don't what know, I mean? Richie. You haven't seen this where they like. Wait, you can do this? Yeah, give me a sec. Wait, but before you even go there, this is what I'm thinking that that like. At the funeral, I, I just get like, because I want everybody to take a selfie. Like, what if you just, <laughs> if you just wink and a gun, everybody that comes to the, to the fucking funeral, be like, yo, one more time for my boy. I can picture that. Uh, what else could you do? If it was, oh, for the, uh, for the submarine guy, it could just be him like fucking trying to look out a window. <laughs> if it's a junkie you got him fucking tied off or something yeah if it's a suicide you, know, you can have fun with that but yeah you, so wait they're doing this yo he's yeah. a tall chap yeah so he loved playing video games so they posed him here playing oh. his favorite video game he's oh. got his favorite snacks there and you could go up and take one last selfie with him no way. I mean, dude, it's way better than being in the Dracula pose. Yeah, it's definitely more respectful, I think. Do you think they actually buried him with those Nikes on? No way. Somebody went <laughs> home in those socks. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to do the... Uh, if you got to do the coffin, I feel like you should at least have some fun with it and just go massive boner. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't mention it. Like, yo, why is Richie in a suit, a suit jacket and gray sweatpants? <laughs> like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and they better hook it up, too. Wait, is this the same guy? This is a different guy. He stood like this for three days. It was a three-day long wake. <laughs> <laughs> How is it only black people that have bought into this so far? <laughs> Get that, make that like, bigger. I'll try to see like that guy. Hispanic. I don't know. I don't see any Jesuses in the background yet. Is that yeah. real? <laughs> Dude, that oh. is unbelievable. I like how they've got his hand in his pants. Kind of like you were pointing out. Yeah. No, yeah, he's, he's giving him a little bit of... <laughs> and it's also almost the same pose that he had on the wall there, too, which I'm a big fan of. I don't know if he cut... <laughs> yes, that's amazing. <laughs> They're like, see? No, he looked like this. <laughs> Dude, there's so much more fun to be had. Look, if, if a bear gets shot, it winds up in scary pose for the rest of its life. You know? <laughs> Let's do something cool. <laughs> All right. You what else do I got here? Hmm? Oh, damn. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> With a bush? Bush light? <laughs> yeah, and a wine glass and just angry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, why have white people not jumped on this yet? Come on. We got it. Uh. 
If oh. enough cool black people do it, then the whites are going to start <laughs> we'll doing start it. Stealing it. <laughs> yeah, we will definitely steal that shit at some point. <laughs> we, but I mean, I, I know that the uh, there's that that hilarious thing that happens it, that China has uh, the 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 uh, the wedding. Or I'm sorry, the funeral strippers. Right, I've, I've talked about that with, with Kumia before. That for people that don't have friends, they can or like or a big family, they can hire these strippers that come and like do dead dead body strip teases. <laughs> they give your dead body a lap dance just to get people to show up. But dude, that's gonna China's the place if you want to if you're a sex worker looking for a busy schedule. They've got 300 million extra men. Have we ever talked about that? Not on here. But the, yeah. yeah, the result of the one child policy in the 80s and 90s was 300 million men that don't have a, a corresponding female. It's like it's the population of the United States almost, but dudes, dudes with nobody to fuck. That, that's the only reason that I think that we do have to push ahead with the sex robots with the ai robots <laughs> the ai pussy is like yo keep these dudes from going crazy we do not want to fight no chinese dudes that haven't bust the nut <laughs> milk them milk them good hook those dudes up to the ai milking machine 300 million of them boy Woo! but um all right, did, did you uh you watch the RFK interview? I did. Yeah. So Yeah, I I think it's uh it, it's I listened to it on my way to Pennsylvania and mm -hmm. when I when I first got done with it it was like you know, it's it's like holy shit, the fucking vaccines are poison. And I uh, tempered by but wait, like there's got to be some more to this. And I do think the idea of there being a debate is really important. But also it's like something like that. And I love that Rogan just lets the guy talk. But there does have to be some kind of fact checking in, in that kind of long form, you know, case that's being laid out. Because, you know, Rogan also doesn't know what he's talking about with that kind of thing. And it's like, I, I kind of, I, I found myself talking about it that it was like, yeah, you know, RFK, like, really knows how to read science. And it's like, that is also the kind of thing that, that you say, what it, that, that's like my cousin Vinny type shit. Like, oh, no, my cousin fucking does law. Like, knows how to read science definitely sounds like a dumb guy's explanation of a smart guy. And, uh, I don't know. I I think the guy definitely deserves to have a a presidential debate for sure. Like it's it's fucked up that that the that the DNC is sidelining him in in a way that you know they they they're basically saying that he's not a serious contender, but he has close to the same polling numbers as DeSantis. And they're basically saying that DeSantis is going to be the Trump killer. But, oh, well, there's nobody to run against Biden. Nothing we can do. <laughs> nobody serious is there. And, and his whole thing is not the vaccine shit. I mean, the vaccine shit is like what he's known for. And it does seem like it's somewhat unfair that or, you know, it's definitely unfair that he's been pushed out of of the mainstream as being a conspiracy theorist. But. Somebody needs to, if not debate, fact check piece by piece that interview. And, uh, you know, I, I was kind of like explain it to Lisa, who you guys know is my veterinarian girlfriend. And she looked it up and found this stuff, so that, which I found really interesting. Uh, 
In the piece, Kennedy relied extensively on the work of Mark Geyer, a doctor whose license to practice medicine was revoked by Maryland in 2011. Geyer pushed the vaccine autism link as a frequent expert witness. He also misrepresented his credentials and developed a protocol for treating autism that involved injecting children with the drug that is used to chemically castrate sex offenders at a cost of upwards of $70,000 per year. So that's not great. <laughs> If, if you're keeping track, that's not that's not awesome. And then uh, here's the other thing: on the Rogan podcast, Kennedy simply waved away this. Oh, sorry, I get I have to do read the part ahead. Uh, the link between thimerosal thimerosal vaccines and autism has been disproven again and again by scientific studies. But even if Kennedy, Kennedy w w was right, he's not. Blah blah has not been used in vaccines except certain flu vaccines since 2001. The alleged dangers of thimerosal are not a reason to avoid vaccines today. Um, and that, that that goes on, but you don't need to keep that up. But yeah, but I don't think that's actually what it was saying. Is that I think more than anything, he's saying that starting in eight, in 1989, when this when the push for 72 vaccines started was when there was also this irreversible trend in in autism and he he does very clearly say that it's not it, it doesn't necessarily equal equal causation but there is a correlation and like at all i mean it's why is it that hard to statement by statement to have them go through and actually fact check it as opposed to this guy's a lunatic and well actually pull that thing back up because there was more of that is that um kennedy told rogan that it could be aluminum in vaccines that's causing problems but an adult typically ingests seven to nine milligrams of aluminum per day through foods and a typical vaccine has less than half a milligram Infants will be exposed to far more aluminum through their diets than vaccines, and there is no scientific evidence that aluminum is linked to autism or any other any other healthy con health concerns cited by Kennedy. Perhaps that's why Kennedy hedged. There's lots of other toxins in the vaccines, you know, could be responsible. But yeah, you're also not getting them directly into your blood. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm also I'm a I'm a dumbass. But. <clears throat> Yeah, it. It also I, feels like people nitpick the convenient parts of mm -hmm. the interview to attack and miss some of the overall arguments. Yeah, his life arc, his life story, and his work is definitely extremely success. You know, he's extremely successful in arguing his cases. He knows about mercury poisoning. He knows about this type, this type of shit. And it, it didn't, I, it didn't come across to me like he's, he's anti-vax. It seemed like he was trying to, like he's trying to push for safety in vaccines. And, and anything criticizing vaccines comes off as anti-vax. But I mean, look, I'm vaccinated as shit, but I'm done, I'm done getting uh, the, the COVID vax. That much I do know. <laughs> you know what they say, jab me four times, shame on you. Uh, Give me the blood clot one once, and I'm good to go. Yeah, he, it, just, let, let's get back on our onto our fail suds. Uh, so, do, 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 do. oh, before I before I go, uh, yeah, I want to. There, there's a few things here. Uh, the trans activist that I was calling a shitbag apologized. I don't know if you saw that. It was ridiculous. That uh, is like, oh, I just got caught up in trans joy. That's why I, today I need to apologize. Montoya said, "This behavior is inappropriate and disrespectful for any event at the White House." The White House correspondent said, "It does not reflect the event we hosted to celebrate the LGBTQ in attendance. Individuals in the video will not be invited to future events." But yeah, she said. Uh, 
It was, it was never my intention to create a situation <laughs> that would lead to harassment and harm of myself or others, not for trans, nor for trans joy. Dude, th th it has fucking nothing to do with trans shit. It's, it's like just, just hooking. If, if she took a shit on the floor of, of the White House, was it just, she just had to take a trans shit? No, you took a shit. It's, 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 it's not some rainbow shit. You're just a dirtbag with no class that took a shit. But yeah, I think her, uh, I'm calling it that her followers went through the roof last week and then she lost every brand deal that she's ever had in her life and ever will have because she's the scumbag that whipped her tits out at the White House. But yo, it was crazy though. We, uh, I tried to post a video to TikTok about that and it absolutely would not let me post the video. And yeah, and, yeah no, Twiz was actually the one that was trying to post it for me. And it, it, because at first, like you notice that all the things that went viral about it were a, uh, it, was, it was always an image. It wasn't the actual video. It was like people stitching over a, an image and then we tried it with the sound off, or it was sound on, then sound off, and even with the sound off, it was still somehow a protected tweet, or not, not tweet, it was a protected uh, TikTok video because people were gonna say something negative about this protected class of people, even though this class of people in this case had no class. It's, <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> But, uh, da, 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 da. do I have time for this? Yeah, I think I got time for this. Yeah. The, uh, the, 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 did you see the first class seat thing that went viral this past weekend? Of, no, just seen it now. That's very funny. Okay. Go to, go to the video. Yeah, play the video of the, the flight attendant cutting her out of there. Like, no, you can't. And then she's, she's going through this, this process and... Yeah, she's wrapping the seat up and then tells this guy to stop filming her. Stop filming me. Why are you filming me? Stop it. As soon as I saw this part, I was like, fake. Right? First of all, she's so calm. Secondly, where is everybody on this plane? And then you do that. That's your first thing that you're going to do, is put your feet straight up in the air. Where are the rules? And it was also that her uh, her hair was way too well done, her makeup's done to go on this flight where she plans on just sleeping it off for the whole thing, and that her that it gets destroyed or whatever. Everything about this video said that it was fake, and it got millions of views and a shit ton of comments. But. So it was it was just it was a, it was a weird uh, weekend of things really popping that were obviously fake. Uh, the uh, the Garth Brooks thing that uh, that Garth Brooks's investors pulled out after he claimed that they were going to serve Bud Light. Uh, it was uh, th the the article that 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 was in was in the Dunning Kruger Times which is the, is the psychological phenomenon where you think that you know more about a subject than you do. Uh, <laughs> but like, as soon as I saw that, it's like, okay, it's obviously bullshit. And then like every single conservative media site picked it up, which was truly telling of how much they give a fuck. It's, it, it's just that thing that I was talking about of the... Uh, of conservatives being so drunk on the Bud Light win right now that they just want more and more of these these cancel wins. The people that the, the anti cancel culture people that are now just fucking horny for canceling shit. But uh, all right, so the uh, the Hunter thing is really funny. That 
I feel like I've wanted to talk about Hunter so many times that he reaches a plea deal, or reaches a deal to plead guilty in tax and gun case. Is a tentative agreement with federal prosecutors to plead guilty of two minor tax crimes and admit to the fact, to the facts of a gun charge under terms that would probably keep him out of jail. Will definitely keep him out of jail. Uh, but here's the fun thing: is that the younger Biden's attorney said the deal means a long-running criminal investigation is resolved. But the U.S. U.S. Attorney David Weiss says that it's still ongoing. So, minor discrepancy there. But uh, he was tentatively agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges of failure to pay in 2017 and 2018 for income of more than $1.5 million, for which he owed $100,000 in income. And then the other thing is just like lying on the gun application, right? Because it, it asks if, you're, if you do any illegal drugs. Everybody's going to lie on that gun application. That has to be the most lied, lied on gun application in the world. Like, do people go back retroactively if they get caught with coke and they find out that, that, that they have a legal gun permit? Like, oh, you're catching this now. Uh, it's, it's, it's such bullshit. But the... Uh, the, 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 all the stink around it uh, that Marjorie Taylor Greene has made, like she said that like they got these documents and it's the most, it's the most blatant crime she's ever seen and it's how to launder money and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, it's, it's the mafiosa Biden family shit. But <laughs> they don't actually want them to go to jail. They want them, they want exactly what happened is to to be able to keep complaining about special treatment, right? Like, exactly. It, it, it's like, it, it's the same thing with, uh, with the Democrats being so horny for Trump, that like, if Trump just went away, that they, their, their fundraising would go to the basement. But it's like, they have something to fundraise against. And that's why, I mean, it, it's basically, it's why uh, they wanted, Joe, they would rather lose to Trump than have Bernie win, right? Because Bernie was like, I'm going to get rid of all these fucking consultants and all this shit. That's what's keeping the machine. Get Trump is keeping both sides of this machine going. The orange man bad machine is what keeps them in business. And like, likewise with, with Hunter, it's, I mean, it, it's basically, he's Benghazi part two. That like there was there's something like seven <laughs> fucking uh, uh, Senate investigations of Benghazi that none of them actually came up with anything, right? But but the idea that they're freaking out over over the you know this, this corrupt tie of him uh, the 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 nepotism of him getting off. That, what is the point of your dad being the president of the United States if you can't beat late taxes? Come on, man. <laughs> to, to quote Joe Biden, come on, man. The, uh, the best, one of the best cronyism things ever was, uh, was Jan, John Ashcroft. Do you remember that? No. That he was like... Mr. Tough on Crime as a senator. And he had imposed like insane, or he was all about the, the war on drug shit and had imposed like crazy sentences on people. And then his nephews got caught with something like 50, it was 35 or 50 weed plants. Like they had like a full on grow operation and they got a year probation. And so th this is a perfect, perfect uh, Bush era White House response. A spokeswoman for the Bush Cheney transition team said, given Senator Ashcroft's reputation for zero tolerance, I'm sure if he had anything to do with it, the penalty would have been much worse. He would have influenced it, the sentence in the opposite direction. She then, de <laughs> she then declined further comment. <laughs> 
<laughs> so the proof that he didn't uh, that he didn't interfere and get this kid off. Like at, at one point, he was pushing for like life sentences or something for for growing marijuana and distributing. So the proof that that he wasn't involved was that he would have thrown the book at him if he was. Get the fuck out of here at my godson. But uh, dude, the the ultimate. The, the, the ultimate, uh, like, fuck job with weed ever was in, in the book Reefer Madness. It's not about, it's not the documentary about weed. It's the, uh, the, it, I actually know Eric Schlosser. I know, I, I look at me. I know an author. You I know, know an author. Uh, but it, it's about the black market in the U.S. created by porn pot and illegal immigration. And in Florida... The, there was a case where a, uh, a, a, a Mexican family had been held by orange farmers like at gunpoint with no passports and they only paid them in crack. They paid them in like crack and orange juice and they made this whole family work for like years and somebody finally escaped and got the cops. And one person in that family got, I think it was two years. And in the same county, the same judge gave a kid who had, uh, who had weed in, in, a, in a drug-free school zone 90 years for weed versus slavery. <laughs> Wild, dude. And happy June 19th, by the way, folks. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, just the ultimate fuck job. But um, the reason I was calling this the, the fail son episode was that I wanted to get to, we, we watched the, uh, the Army Hammer documentary, which I highly recommend on, uh, on HBO, whatever they call it now. <laughs> is it Go or is it, is it just the it's O? Max. It's an it's H. Max. Okay, yeah, H. Heron. That'd be a better selling point. It w it really would be, but uh, yeah, Army Hammer is exactly what I was talking about before with, and, and his whole family is with these rich dudes need something else to do. That this fucking guy, a thing that that didn't like get pushed nearly enough with it with the narrative about him when he you know got so called canceled was that. He's from a long line of maniacs that his father, well, his great grandfather was Armand Hammer, which I thought meant like arm and hammer, like baking soda. But it's from, uh, it, it's the, the, he owned Occidental Petroleum. So he was like an, an oil magnate and Dude, basically, he was like, a, he was an oil tycoon, master of bribery. He threw, if you watch The Crown, he's the one that threw the, uh, the gala for Princess, Princess Di and Prince Charles. Like, weaseled his way all the way, all the way in with them and raised a family of maniacs that had to live by his rules. His son was, so the grand, army's grandfather was a cokehead meth head pedo who shot guns in the house and had his daughter hold up a phone book at a party so he could shoot at it like fucking johnny appleseed did <laughs> his own daughter with a gun but uh, the uh and that fun part of it was that uh when, when old when old arm and hammer died he there was only 40 million dollars left and and army's dad pilfered all of it his sister got 250 grand and he got 40 million <laughs> yeah that's gonna leave a mark the ultimate checkmate but uh i mean for one thing respect if you can blow a billion bucks in your in your lifetime on your own like it doesn't come down to your kids to squander all that money. If you can, if you can blow a cool 960 million, you fucking lived raw, bro. Yeah. I actually knew a kid, 
I, I knew a, kid, a guy that had a uh, an inheritance from Wawa, and he blew twenty million in like five years. <laughs> yeah, but like at a crack house, like he really did it right. He fucking he went the full hunter route, but uh, but yeah. So the. Uh, the, the the army part of it is fucking rough because it's like you know you expect it to be just about like oh he was this he, he was a wannabe cannibal uh, he he was like he was super weird and admitted to or and like had texted a bunch of the girls that he wanted to he wanted them to get a rib removed so he could smoke it and eat it but he's and he said it to like four of them which is if you say it to four times, if you say it four times, you meant that shit. <laughs> like, like, oh, this motherfucker really wanted to eat a rib, but uh, it, it like, it kind of drives home without saying it that the real thing was that he was like, the dude was just a stone cold abuser that was like his thing was just beating the shit out of girls, but he said that he was into BDSM. And like, and like he always led with that, but it, that it was just like, no, 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 it's, it's BDSM. Like, and, and one girl's like, he said to her, like, you, you, uh, you really took it like a champ. And, he, and she's, like, she's like, you raped me for four hours and I tried to get away from you. And he's like, gotta say, when you were, when you were crying and crawling away, that was exhilarating. Like, fuck, man. Uh, like, like, there. <laughs> There, there should be a path back for people that say stuff. You know what I mean? That it's like, it's like I'm, I'm super anti-cancel people for, for shit that they, that they say. But come on, man. Enough with this dude. And, but and a thing that ties into to the other shit was that, uh, it, 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 that girl pressed rape charges against him and and TMZ ran a story saying that it was like good news for Army Hammer the rape charges have been dropped uh, never dropped never dropped <laughs> they're still open and Gloria Allred closes the thing is like yeah they didn't call me because they, that's still an open investigation and boy when Gloria Allred shows up that is <laughs> that that is your ass, boy. So <laughs> it spells trouble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's Johnny Cochran for white chicks, basically. But uh, yeah, but I was close with this saying that the uh, the universal thing that he did, which is what every rich dude does, is just checked himself into rehab. There's no rehab for trying to eat bitches. <laughs> Like, that's not a thing. I have friends that have been in rehab with rich people, like rich old people, and a buddy of mine was in there when uh, Liza Minnelli showed up. <laughs> and she, she wanted to go by Lisa M. And she's like, yeah, hi, class, hi. Yeah, it's Lisa. Yeah. But, and she went there because she was, uh, she was on stage in Reno and started ordering off of a McDonald's menu in between her songs. <laughs> like, that's fun. You can fix that. Uh, another buddy of mine was in there with uh, with the boxer Johnny Tapia, who was addicted to uh, to keyboard cleaner. And he he called bottom bunk, like Johnny did, but he would be doing burpees all night long. And my buddy my buddy's waking up to like the bed shaking, and he just hears. <sighs> And fucking Johnny Tapia, pull up Johnny Tapia. If you can, Johnny Tapia is banging out pull-ups, like fingertip pull-ups. I think he said that he counted a set of 30 one time, <laughs> which is so batshit crazy, which is all to say, you can fix that stuff, but you can't fix Rape is cannibal, folks. You just can't fix that. Uh, all right, this one got away from me. Yeah, what is it? Faceless? Are you sure it's him? Yeah, can you imagine seeing that mug <laughs> doing pull-ups <laughs> on your rehab bunk? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Well, okay, this was fun. This got away from me at the end there. But, uh, 
please like and subscribe, do the things that, let's face it, you have not been doing. But I sure enjoyed doing this show. Bobby Twiz, thank you for hanging out with me. And, uh, oh, also, I'm on... <laughs> Doing this very weird tour of the Poconos. I'll be at Pocono Organics this Saturday with a special appearance by our own Robert Tamboro. Should be fun. It's going to be very fun. And other than that, I'm in uh, I'm in the city a whole bunch. You can see my schedule on Instagram. And uh, thanks a lot. That's really real. Peace. In a world that's been kicked in the nuts by fake news, nobody knows what to believe. I don't know what I said. Uh-huh. We need one Maverick newsman to cut through all the noise and tell us what's really real. I'm not that guy.